The complex order of the biosphere is not created by chance, is not emerging from nothing, but appears by actualization of a virtual order which already exists before it is an empirical order. This hypothesis posits a trans-empirical order underlying all of reality. In Darwinism, the evolving order is created by chance, a noise that natural selection will transform into music, as Monod wrote. In my model, the music is part of an ongoing cosmic concert, which is actualized by chance in quantum transitions. Robert Pollack is a Columbia University biologist. He writes, facts from science tell us our species is not the creation of design, but the result of accumulated errors. In contrast to this view, it has to be said, the synthesis of a gene is a quantum process. All quantum processes are characterized by quantum indeterminacy. This means that the outcome of a particular event is unpredictable. When a particular gene is synthesized and the product differs from the template, nobody has made an error, but the indeterminacy has been at work. Jacques Monod's characterization of processes like this in terms of chance and necessity is completely off the mark. In the synthesis of a single gene, there is no necessity. This illustrates the fundamental importance of the quantum nature of genetic processes. If genes were made up of solid particles, of cogwheels like watches, which are screwed together with the help of a template, Mutations would be very difficult, if not impossible. In contrast, the quantum rules of the genetic processes encourage mutations, because these rules are, at the same time, lawful and allow for a certain creativity and choice. Third part, the evolution of life in a holistic reality. Life is evolving within the order of the universe. It is a manifestation of this order and not in conflict with it. If the nature of reality is that of an indivisible wholeness, then it is unlikely that segregate principles like brutality and selfishness are primary principles of evolution and that processes of marginalization are applied to annihilate the disadvantaged. At this point, it is important to note the precise language. Of course, aggression and struggle exist in nature. Of course, the world is structured into polarities, such as good and bad, war and peace. However, it is the mistake of Neo-Darwinians to select the negative poles, war and aggression, as the primary principles and sole source of innovation and progress. Interestingly, details are increasingly becoming known, which show that the evolution of complex life forms could not have occurred without symbiotic principles, such as communication and biological cooperation. In the activities of genes, for example, it is not the selfishness of selfish genes that is important, as Richard Dawkins claims, but the fundamental biological principles of the genome are cooperativity, communication and creativity as our honored guest Joachim Bauers wrote. 
The driving force in early cellular evolution was not the rivalry of replicators, as Dawkins claims. In his wonderfully poetic language, he describes, there was a struggle for existence among replicator varieties. These proto-carnivores simultaneously obtained food and removed competing rivals. In contrast, different systems shared information in gene transfer processes. The high level of novelty, writes Carl Wilsey, a microbiologist, required to evolve cell designs is a product of communal invention of the universal horizontal gene transfer field. Not intralineage variation. It is the community as a whole the ecosystem which evolves. I believe that the current synchronicity in biology and physics is not accidental. At a time when physicists discover the wholeness of reality, biologists discover the importance of connecting principles such as communication and biological cooperativity, as essential factors in the evolution of life. Problems have also arisen with the principles of chance and separability, which are fundamental to neo-Darwinism. It is unlikely that the evolution of life is based on such principles because they are in contrast to the wholeness of reality. As it turns out, <clears throat> genomic alterations are not completely random. Mutations are not driven by blind chance. But cells may have mechanisms for choosing which mutations will occur. So from a paper by Cairns, Overbeck and Miller from Harvard University. Experiments by Nobel laureate Barbara McClintock have led her to conclude that there are programmed responses to threats that are initiated within the genome itself. And that genome may reorganize itself when faced with a difficulty for which it is unprepared. As a consequence, the formation of new species did not proceed in accumulations of small-scale, gradual changes, as neo-Darwinians claim, but it proceeded in surges 